Taipei is known for its incredible food, but not necessarily its incredible hotels, which is why this little gem is such a find. We're gonna go on a full but quick tour, so let's get into it. Welcome to Taipei. If you'd like to know the exact rate that I paid for my stay or my next five videos up in queue, please check out the description below. And if you're new here, hi there and welcome to the channel. My name is Kevin. I think that the world needs a bit more honest travel content these days, so I make airline trip reports, high-end hotel reviews, and cruise ship tours as well, all without invitation. I always film without the company's knowledge and I self-fund my trips to be sure I get a true experience. Then I give you nothing more than my own personal, honest, unbiased opinion. Not to jump too far into the deep end right away, but this hotel needs a little bit of context before we see inside. The design of the hotel, credited to Ray Chen and Partner Architects, is inspired by a series of etchings by the 19th century Spanish artist Francisco de Goya, named Los Proverbios. Even on the internet, where everyone has 12 opinions and knows everything, people still struggle to explain the artworks themselves. They are largely symbolic, and like the hotel, they seem quite normal at first glance. But the longer you linger, the more that normalcy seems to unravel. I promise that's as deep as we're gonna go. The hotel seems to have two personalities. One is minimalist and dark, with a bit of a Scandinavian feel to it. The other is extravagant and full of texture, with a bunch of peculiar details. The lobby area, straight off the bat, seems to meld them together quite well. The basic structure of the space is bare bones. Warm wood paneling and cold gray flooring, with soaring ceilings, vintage tin tiles, greenery, and chandeliers. It's no surprise that this hotel is a member of Design Hotels, which loosely falls under Marriott's umbrella. Let's check out where we actually are. Hotel Proverbs is in Taipei's Da'an district, the Brooklyn of Taipei, if you will. I'll mention that Taipei is a city that is very easy and affordable to get around via the likes of Uber. But if you'd prefer to take transit, the closest metro station is just a five minute walk away. Keep in mind, this is not one of the metro lines that easily connects to Taipei Taoyuan Airport so it will be a bit more convenient to drive. Let's head up to my room. The elevators are where the mildly surreal experience begins. The hotel has 42 rooms in total, and all of the corridors leading to them are lined with copper paneling with super plush carpeting and the occasional faux antelope for a bit of flair. The walls may look dirty, the copper panels specifically. That's, um, that's intentional. The finish on the copper panels is made so that it preserves the fingerprints and handprints of those that visit so they can literally leave their mark. I, I, I think that's a bit creepy and I'd personally just rather sign a guest book, but on a practical level, I think it just makes what is an otherwise very clean hotel look messy. Into my room now and surprise, surprise, you enter directly into the bathroom. Besides the strange layout, I do have to say that I absolutely love the room. Even though the hotel was just opened in 2016, these rooms, especially the living rooms, they, they just look like they have stories to tell. Part cabin in the woods, part industrial loft, there's a strange mix of design cues in here, and this is where I think Goya's inspiration is felt the most.
My room had a very nice sitting area, complete with a great sized working table and leather chair, along with a really comfortable velvet-ish sofa. Giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing are the two easiest ways that you could let YouTube know that this video was worth your time today and genuinely entertaining. For anyone interested in supporting me further, my Patreon is also linked in the description below. Thanks very much for watching and supporting today. The mini bar continues the design and is well stocked with complimentary drinks and snacks, just the alcohol is chargeable. I also love these. I'm, I'm not really sure how useful they are or why we need them, but I love the design. Now onto the bathroom, which can be shut off with floor length drapes. Featuring a single but nicely sized vanity, this is I believe the first ever hotel that I've actually had an amenity kit at, or whatever they'd be called in hotels for guests. The shower and toilet combo features a rainfall and handheld shower, along with Apothecals by Damana products, which I was a huge fan of. There's also a freestanding full-size soaking tub. And then the last detail inside is just the back of the entrance door, which was just begging to be touched. My room also had a balcony which overlooked the park and was just a really nice finishing touch on an otherwise fantastic room. The hotel has one restaurant, Lidiot which I thought was a really odd name, but given the Goya tie-in, it makes a bit more sense now. The interior is understated lavish. Is that, is that a thing?
The menu was short, but had a nice selection of Western options. Normally at a hotel like this, I'd wonder why is the menu fully Western? But I think it might make sense to just not try to compete with the food scene in Taipei. None of the starters were really speaking to me, so I asked if I could have a half portion of the beef tendon bolognese as a starter, to which I was very, very matter-of-factly told no. As in, no, I couldn't have a half portion. All right, then moving on. For the main course, I had the New York Strip. The pasta was good, but could have done with a deeper flavor and a bit more seasoning. The steak, though, was very good quality with a perfect temperature. Just above the restaurant is the lounge, as well as the in-house bar, open during the evenings. Keeping with that matter-of-fact denial of a half portion, I'll say that applied to just about all of the service here. It was very matter-of-fact, but quite polished at the same time. This is not a sprawling luxury hotel. It doesn't need the best service that you've ever had. So I, I think it was fitting, if not a little bit jarring. All of the tin tiles that you see here behind the bar and also in the lobby are said to be vintage and sourced directly from New York. I booked with Amex's the hotel collection, which generally means no breakfast is included, but if you stay two or more nights, you'll get a $100 food credit. That applied, but they also included breakfast for free, and you had a choice of three options. Food-wise, this is where I think a bit more thought would have just done them well. The food was good, but the majority of people staying at the hotel are either business people or couples, both of which would generally lead to multi-night stays. So given that, the breakfast menu could get pretty boring and monotonous fairly quickly. Last up, we have the small rooftop pool. This was off season, so it wasn't exactly the most inviting spot on earth, but I'd imagine in the summertime, it would be a nice place to be. Overall, the Hotel Proverbs is delightfully different, but not too out there. It has a decidedly premium feel for a fairly reasonable price, and is a place that I would more than happily stay again the next time I'm in Taipei. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please be sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming content. I'll see you next time on what is becoming one of my favorite airlines, China Airlines, from Taipei to Saigon. Oh, and thanks for watching until the end.